So I'd like to thank Ray for selecting our paper and for giving us the opportunity to speak here at SciCon. And I want to apologize because we have a plane to catch right after um, after my talk. So I won't be here for the next presentations and for that I'm really sad, I'm sorry. So uh, when you hear about Brazil, I'm sure that you think about soccer and samba. And then you know we are also a developing country. What you don't know about Brazil is that we are determined to become a developed country. And we want to do that by copying everything that a developed country does. And America, you are our role model. We are going to copy everything you do so that we become a developed country. So if you've got anti-vax movement, yes, we are going to copy that. You've got creationism. Bring it on, we want it. You've got Trump. Okay, we've got the tropical Trump coming up in one week in our next elections. And if you think you've got pseudoscience, I've got news from, from you, USA. You know nothing. We've got pseudoscience and we've got it into our healthcare system in Brazil. You see, Brazil has a unified healthcare system, much like the British and the Canadian one. And we have a private healthcare system as well for people who can afford it. We are the second largest population in the Americas, and the majority of our population cannot afford private healthcare. So they have to rely on our unified healthcare system, which is a public system. And it started in the Constitution of 1988, it was detailed by law in 1990, and it gives every citizen equal and universal access to healthcare services that includes all kinds of treatments, medications and technology. It seemed like a very beautiful idea and it was that the government should be able to provide healthcare to all of its citizens. It takes up to 15% of all our federal revenues, and that is an investment this year that amounted up to $18 billion. That's a lot of money for Brazilian economy. The problem, little problem, is that our beautiful idea of a healthcare system, a public healthcare system, has been invaded by pseudoscience. So now we can offer you alternative procedures such as acupuncture, homeopathy, aromatherapy, laying of the hands, fluoros, all paid for with taxpayers' money. While at the same time we suffer from lack of qualified physicians and equipment. So this is not money that's been well invested. And of course, it costs us a lot. It's, they are high cost treatments based on no evidence whatsoever. And in 2006, they were incorporated in the healthcare system and they became our national policy of integrative and complementary practices, which is a very fancy way of saying, yes, we've got bullshit in our healthcare system. <laughs> and now we have 29 such practices in the public healthcare system and our health minister proudly announced last year that these procedures are very popular and there's lots of people going after them so that we had over 1.4 million procedures and consultations last year alone and the cost of that can add up to $4 billion that's 20% of the total expenditure of money on the healthcare system, and that's also four times our national science budget. So we are investing a lot of money in corporate in Brazil. And why? Why are we doing that? Are Brazilians that stupid? Well, we are about to elect the next Trump, so maybe. But to put, in, to put this in context, we are a very young democracy. We've been through 21 years of military dictatorship and it ended very recently, 1985. So when we got out of the dictatorship, the feeling was that democracy and freedom was urgent. We held a national health conference in 1986, right after the dictatorship ended. And we brought together physicians and researchers 
and together they actually decided to incorporate alternative health practices into the system because they felt that the people should have the right to choose. It was a democratic right. It was about freedom. So people should have the right to choose how they were going to be treated. And at the same time, homeopathy was already recognized by the, by the Federal Council of Medicine as any other medical specialization. So it was common knowledge that homeopathy was a medical specialization and acupuncture came after that, but it was also recognized by the Federal Council of Medicine and that makes it very difficult for us to remove these two modalities from the system. They are even taught in our universities, our medical schools. And of course, if they are credited by the Federal Council of Medicine, it means that they are performed by doctors. So, doctors may well criticize the other alternative procedures, but they are not going to criticize these two. So, summing up, what happens in Brazil is that we have a healthcare system that is a duty of the government and a right of every citizen. And people have the right to choose how they're going to be treated. This leads to a process of litigation in medicine and science where anyone can go to court and demand to be treated the way they deem proper. And the cost of these court sentences, because people are suing the government for medication, the cost of these sentences can go up to, and it went in 2016, up to $1.5 billion. That's a lot of money to pay for quackery in a country that doesn't have money to spend. When you bring pseudoscience into your healthcare system, bad science can happen. And we had an affair in Brazil recently called the phosphoethanolamine affair that started in my university, in the University of Sao Paulo, which is the largest university in Latin America. And a professor called Gilberto Chirici decided that he had found the cure of cancer the cure of all cancers in the shape of a miracle pill. He took it out of his hat because he was a chemistry professor, a full professor at the university, so, so she, he had credibility, but he didn't have any background in oncology. He didn't know the first thing about cancer treatments. And he decided that he had found the cure of cancer. He started to produce phosphatanolamine, that's the name of the compound, in the shape of these blue and white pills that you see, and he started to distribute it to the local population of a small town in the state of Sao Paulo. This went unnoticed for 20 years. And the local population was very happy getting its cancer miracle pills. You think that nobody in that town died of cancer, but of course they did. And what happened next is that when the professor retired, the university thought it best to stop that madness and decided to stop the production of the pills. He was producing the pills inside the university with public money for 20 years. And of course everyone asked, well, okay, what's the harm? Just a crazy professor producing pills, it happens. But the harm is that the professor also told his patients that for the, period, for the miracle pill to work, we had to work with an intact immune system. And that meant no chemotherapy, no radiotherapy, no immunotherapy. So what's the harm is that people were actually quitting their regular treatments to go on the miracle pill. So we will never know how many people actually died because of bad science and pseudoscience in this case. And when the universities decided to stop the production, of course the population didn't like it. And phosphoethylamine made national news. So what was a local affair became a national affair. And then everybody was talking about it. Politicians took advantage of it, of course, and tried to pass laws authorizing the distribution of the bill. And the story got to the Brazil Supreme Court. And then we had a lot of people fighting for the pills, the population demanding the pills, the university fighting back, 
uh, medical associations fighting back, and in the end, the Supreme Court ruled against it and demanded that the production stops. But the population was not happy about it. They wanted a pill. They believed in the pill. It had made national news. So the federal government and the state of Sao Paulo government had to intervene. And they had to at last conduct the tests and clinical trials that the professor himself had failed to do. He hadn't run any kind of tests on his miracle pill. He just took it out of his head and started to produce them. And of course, when the government, with public money, ran the tests, the results were, surprise, surprise, the thing didn't work. <laughs> but the group that worked with Professor Kerichi was not happy about it, and part of the group decided they were going to market phosphatanolamide as a supplement anyway. And they couldn't do it in Brazil because Brazilian legislation is not very clear about supplements for health. So they decided to come here to the land of the free and produce it in the USA. And they did. Brazil has a law that authorizes people to import medication or supplements if it's for personal use only. So the matter seemed to be settled. Okay, so now the population has access to solid information. They know that the pill doesn't work. But still, if they want to buy it, they can import it from the US and get the pill anyway. So, case closed, right? Of course not. Pseudoscience never ends like that. We have a large group of people called the fossil believers and they still argue that the tests were invalid and they demand retrials. And they can explain to you how phospho works. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to explain to you the mechanism of action of phosphatanolamine, but I can assure you, Gwyneth Paltrow would be envious. <laughs> <laughs> and people still go to court to demand the miracle pill. And of course, it became a cottage industry for lawyers. They are very happy about it. And of course, desperate cancer patients. Mm -hmm. Patients still go to court to demand a miracle pill because they really want it to be true. We don't know what's going to happen with the food supplement. Brazilian law is very uncertain about that. The professor, he's now retired. He still gets full pay from the university and no sanction whatsoever for all the harm he may have inflicted on people because we will never be able to assess how many people may have died because they left their regular treatments to go on the miracle pill because you know the dead don't talk unless your name is Benachek and they are <laughs> The professor still says that he has the cure of all cancers and he still goes to news and to TV shows and says that phosphatidylamine is there for anyone who wants to cure cancer and there are still plenty of people who believe him. So, the scientific community in Brazil has been very silent about it and we decided that it was our turn to take action. And by we, I mean a group of scientists, journalists and lawyers who came together and if we are going to copy everything that you do here in the US, we are going to copy the best thing you do and that is CFI, of course. So, we decided to start Institute for Skepticism, Rational Thinking, and to fight pseudoscience in Brazil. It's going to be called a question of science, and we hope that we can provide solid science-based information for the citizens and for policymakers, so that their decisions are based on information rather than misinformation and pseudoscience, because that is what democracy is all about. You are only free to choose if you have access to information. Because if you are going to make your choices based on pseudoscience and misinformation, you are not free at all. You are just enslaved by ignorance. Thank you very much.